Chased by the Rain. We'll go in the order that they were that they were performed. So Chased by the Rain, which was by um, Balenci and La directed by Lara. So we're going to start with what you found memorable or meaningful from that first production. Yes. Uh, when they celebrated um, the, the, that it finally rained. Um, when the, the, so, the, so the kind of end of the scene, when they, they celebrated the rain, finally arrived. Yeah. Um, I love how the writing is, catches the images of, 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 the, of the rain, the, the senses. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, I really felt the senses, you know, how I could hear the sounds of the rain, the smell, but just in the writing, without mm -hmm. having quite a lot on stage. Thanks, Ogeta, yeah? I like the transition between the two scenes, like, so when the, um, when the, we remember what the grandmother says, and they say it at the same time, mm -hmm. so it's like the, yeah. Okay, great, yeah, thank you. One of my most memorable moments was right at the beginning when they started, there was a beautiful pause. They were all looking at the grandmother and then the grandchild spoke and we were all like oh, waiting for it. And it gave that sense of waiting right from the beginning. Yeah, lovely. Yes? Uh, when she was singing and then she was handing them spoons and they were like drinking. And she was keep on singing the same song over and over. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, and, and um, what, just talk to me a little bit more about that moment with the handing of the spoons. What, how, did that, how did you read that moment? How did you experience that? Um, I, think like, I think like there was no water, mm. so she was like giving them the water and then the other time it, there was like no water. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so it was, you really got a sense of those <coughs> teaspoons of how scarce the water was, didn't yes. you? Yeah. yeah? Um, I like the part when, um, when all of the, um, the three children, grandchildren or something, mm. they picked up their cups so we thought that they were going to pour a full cup, <laughs> but then she took one cup and then they all had to take this two <laughs> Yeah, it's a real conserving bag. A real conservation water, yeah? Um, I like it when Zoe and Tepang were like, you know, stretching, getting ready for the second time. <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah. Okay, yes. I liked it when Zoe's character said something meaningful, like when they were like in their faithful type thing, and she said something meaningful, and they were all like, "Where's Tabo? Where's Tabo?" Because they didn't believe that it was her saying that. Right. Him saying that. It's confusing after a while. Okay. Anything else meaningful, memorable from that first piece that stood out for you? Yeah, I was totally amazed by Bungiba who had a script for five mm. minutes and then jumped on the stage and gave it a Okay, so now this is your opportunity to ask your audience some questions. What would you like to ask them? What, you know, in terms of anything, how they received something, what they thought of something? Um, I would like to ask them, what age group do you think that show is for? It's something for everyone. It's like you can watch it with your little brothers, with your parents, with your your gogos. Your gogos. Your gogos. I was gonna say ten and up. Ten and up. And why would you say ten and up? Um, because I think at the age of 10 you start like realizing and you know try to you know understand the play at that age. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have an opinion on this one? Yeah, Jacqueline? Uh, I thought it also could go quite a bit younger yeah, because of the, I mean certainly 10 and up, but also younger because of the, the wonderful sense of storytelling mm -hmm. and going into a magical imagined world. I thought a, a seven, eight, nine-year-old would enjoy that very much. Mm. Yes. Um, I like the fact that it didn't only highlight the fa um, the loss of water, but with everything that, that is lost with water, mm -hmm. like the colours and everything else that they spoke about. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that they actually wanted <coughs> not only to um, get water, but to actually preserve the memories of the grandmother. Right. Okay, very nice. Because yeah, exactly with that, the, the sense of what what kind of you could do with the set. Mm. You know, imagine, I mean, I just bought cups from home that had colour, you know, that was, um, but even the cups that they would have, like, to, you know, um, what it means when they, when they play the rainbows, you know, what, five, five colours, and all she can think of is black, blackish, grey, dark grey, light grey, 
brown chiffon come up with five mm. colors mm. um but the entire world has been as you say when there's no water to kind of and i love when granny when the when it rains and she says the water wrote the rain revived her mm. you know you can really imagine sort of by the end of the play how you could do that that if the whole play has been kind of monochrome and black and white and mm. rusty colors how you would create that effect of of colors coming through i think mm. that would be such a and as you're saying that sense of we take things for granted you know mm. we really just turn on the tap we take things for granted mm. um, so that's why i think it's also a younger mm. audience i agree mm. and and also i love the sense of honoring the gogo as the storyteller i mean there's a lot in the play of her telling her stories and i think we managed to get that feeling that she now can't tell stories anymore mm. um, so the rain doesn't just take away water, but it takes away people's energy, people's life force. Yeah. Khadija? I like the, the, I mean, I like the greater meaning that that has as well. Um, and the fact that there are older people on the planet who carry stories that are very important for younger people to know. And, and I emphasize that because younger people often don't want to know mm. what older people know. And it is so important because it has an effect on, on decision making for a future. Mm. So other questions for audience, yeah? yeah just, just about the Gogo, I mean how, I don't know if it's a question or just a comment, <laughs> but um, they really love their Gogo, um, their grandmother, and I, I really like that in the story, that she's, they really love her. And, <laughs> Um, you know, I just hope that came through because I think that's a beautiful, as you say, a bigger, you know, got a water mm. message or whatever. But, you know, stories have got many layers of meaning to them. I think all the extracts we saw, it's not just about the plot. There's lots mm. of stuff going on. Yeah. But, did you have other questions? Um, another thing I'd like to ask the younger audience is, what does rain mean to you guys? Okay, lots of muttering. Uh, <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear a little bit more. Yeah, what, what were you saying? Water. Yeah, water. And what does that mean for you? Water. Uh, you don't go to school. Sorry? You don't go to school. You don't go to school. <laughs> 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 yeah. Water to be in survival, like survival. And life because you can't survive without water. Survival life, okay, yeah. Um, rain for me is just staying in bed, watching movies and drinking or chocolate or something. Because I'm okay. cold and I don't want to go outside. So. Okay, did you hear that? So staying in bed, watching movies, drinking hot chocolate. Like being inside, you don't want to go outside because of the rain, yeah? Um, actually, it's part of the water cycle. We like, the plants cannot grow without like water. Yeah, and you just go on. So that's also a cycle of life and of nature and, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, for me, it's the beginning of something new. Yeah. Like sometimes it can can be the beginning of a new season. For me, rain means blessings. Sorry, I didn't hear. For me, rain means blessings. Blessings. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Warmness, because you're inside and you're watching movie and the blankets. Warmth. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting that. With an anecdote of Terry, because he he performed. Um, and there was rain, and he was so excited, and he got standing ovation, and he was like, because of the rain, uh, so there's a sense of, I think, blessing, or in, in, in ancestral, the fact that Gogo, the character is there, an ancestral um, feel about it, and I don't, so you can explore, I mean, Tefa was so excited, he, he created those images when he told me that story, so... For you, Lara, anything you wanted to find out from them about what, whether they got something or? No, I just say maybe the young cast. If uh, do you have anything to about playing the characters? Hmm? <laughs> you found it easy to play the characters. Did you find them believable and enjoyable to play them? Yeah. Hey. And why do you think? What what made them enjoyable to play? Because we like, like the characters that we were portraying as like us, like our age. So it doesn't have to like to because we know like we know our age. Okay, so that sort of made them more accessible that they were your age. 
Okay. And for the gogo, uh, where's our gogo? There she is, yeah. So, what, what, what was it like for you playing something much older, obviously? It wasn't much God because I never been old, so I was experiencing, I was experienced being old. <laughs> did you find that it was a challenge, or did uh, what did you find it came easily when you were doing it? At first, I found it so hard. I hardly believe that I would be a cook. <laughs> so as I was practicing, it was becoming easy, you know. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I really enjoyed finding the relationship of the three. Mm. You know, we imagine them having all these adventures together, Marang and mm. you know, Kitso and Tavo. So I think mm. that, in terms of a writing, um, the, the characters had we kind of imagined their backstory and their mm. life and. He's always getting into trouble, and he's the intellectual, and mm. you know. Yeah. So that, you know. Yeah. Add on to that quickly. Yeah. The only problem was um, for me to be playing someone who gets into trouble a lot was a bit difficult because I'm not usually like that. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now questions from you for the writer, for the director. Things that, you, that interested you, or that you were unsure of, or. Anything that you'd like to know? What would you like to know about this particular piece? Yes? Was the grandmother dead? No, she wasn't. She was died. She was going to die had it not rained. Okay. Yes? How long is the play? It's not too long. It's almost like a young parable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and so how much didn't we see in terms of, I mean, how, you know, we, we obviously saw an extract. Um, what percentage of the play did we see, do you think? I think you saw about 40% of the play. Okay. Yeah? Does the grandmother tell a story? Yes, she does. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Any other questions? So, opinions. What, is that a question? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what made you like write the story like about the Google and yes, everything like that? Um, last year I went on a culture quest and I wanted to know the relationship between, because I was raised as a Christian and I wanted to know the relationship between Africans and the higher being, how do they relate to that? And part of my journey included talking to my, the oldest member of my family. And she told me so many stories that I didn't know. She told me the story chased by the rain. And then I felt that she's going to pass away. And my children will never know these stories. And a lot of people will never know these stories. And then I realized how being in a modern world has deprived me from knowing so many beautiful things that not only Africans, but the past, they were done in the past. And I made it my mission to, to want to write those kind of stories, to want to to capture them so that tomorrow I can read them to my children and they will know that, you know, we were once warriors. <laughs> Great question, yeah? Um, where is the place set? It's set in Johannesburg, a hundred years up since it had not rained. So it's an old Johannesburg. There's nothing, all the land is covered in buildings and concrete and everything is rusted and the color has faded. Yeah? Well, one of the things that I said, if, if there's no water, then, because the, you know that the water, the moisture in the air makes the, the metal rust, so if there's no water, then I was rust. Yeah? It's probably full. As the water was disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Just old, that sense that things are old and broken down and parched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you do it? Do you, do you think that you would, would elaborate a little bit more on the sustainability issue? Oh, oh. Um, I had never thought of that, but I think I would. It's because it's coming across as something very important. It seems to be problematic for the water shortage. Yeah, it's so topical okay. right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but what, what I enjoy in terms of that, is it's a different angle to water education, you know. Mm. As you say, just the cup, just that image alone, you know, and then the teaspoon and then nothing. Um, and then I like that it's done in a more poetic way. Um, I think that, you know, you don't feel like you're being lectured to, you know, sort of. 
dream into it a little bit, imagining a world without water. Yeah. Mm. Other opinions? Anything you felt about the play that you feel like you haven't expressed? Yes? I Thank was you. watching the play that got me thinking about what we have now and what we might not have in the future. Mm. So I just wanted to say thank you because it's like conservation, you know. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I really enjoyed the setup of the anticipation that we were going to hear a story from the grandmother. Mm -hmm. Made me really want to know what it is. <laughs> Come out and play with it. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, what Nikki we said it reminds of something. Uh, that also reminds me of the Bible when it says uh, seven years of drought. Ah, okay, yeah. <coughs> Interesting, yeah? For you? It shows how they didn't appreciate the rain until it left. Right. Because even when the rain is here, no one cares about the colors. When it's going, that's when you start missing yeah. the colors. <laughs> Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were talking earlier about how they, they, they like the rain because they escape the rain, as opposed to embracing the rain, you know? I mean, does anybody like running out into the rain and feeling the rain in your face? And, yes. You know? Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. I, I think I found it to be, uh, more than anything, a deeply personal tale of that that is very much connected to Lady and I think I think what I was what I'm basically saying is I think in in her putting together the story she she mustn't fear to really go back into nostalgic elements that that have informed the story because I think even all the audiences can really relate mm. to the story if she brings herself to the story more than her trying to accommodate a younger audience, which is obviously what, what she should be doing. But I think what can really come strongly is, is her nostalgia in the piece, mm. because we will connect to it. So, yeah. Mm. That's, that's fine. Do you want to say something? No? Okay. Does anybody else have a yes? Yeah. Um, uh, the story made me feel like Water is important, like in colors, like, yeah, that's all I want to say. Um, just, I mean, I've got two thoughts. The one is about anticipation, and I think that there's, there's two, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a, a structural thing within the text that where there's anticipation of the rain and anticipation of the story. And I somehow think that those are stakes that can be that, that, so that, that, that we, we really, we don't know when the rain will come and maybe the rain comes too easy. Mm. If we've waited so long for a hundred years for the rain, why does it happen in, in the first 20 minutes? Cool. Um, so, so, it's, it's, so the sense is that... This is the end that we saw. Okay, so that's... This is, so, this is the end, this is okay. our Okay, all right, so... So if they've been waiting... Okay. So it starts with Gogo, do you mind me interrupting you? No, no, no. Because it starts with Gogo telling the stories. Okay and the children don't really appreciate as they should, and then Gogol gets more and more frail. Okay. And they realize that they haven't recorded her stories. So it, it's the record of the stories that activates the rain. What brings the rain? So she tells them in the play, she tells them when they try to, she tells them, I'm gonna die soon. And the only, they, but you can't die, you're the only old person who we have here. Um, she says, "Should I be? What's going to keep me alive is rain. So you have to pray for rain. And because they don't know anything, they don't even know how to pray. Um, so the play is them, their journey from having to pray for rain until it eventually comes. What they do is they say, in Gogo's stories, there must be a lesson about praying for rain because her stories are so important to us. So they go back to one of the stories that she told them about rain, and then they realize that because after the story they told Gogo, but." This story doesn't sound real. It's so magical. Did these things really happen in your time? And she says, yes, they did happen uh, because we had faith then. They realized, oh, cool. It's not really um, how you pray or when you pray. It's about the faith that you have when you pray. Mm -hmm. So that's the lesson that the stories, the story that they re remembered taught them how that's the story that faith brings the rain. So, uh, yeah. And, then, and then mythologies of rain. So mm. it, was, it, it was mentioned about the seven year drought, you know, the ark mm. and the rain queen. So I just think the notions around both Western Christian mythologies of rain and, and, and African centered mythologies of rain are interesting to kind of, I don't know, I mean, it's just, you know, how do you, 
Because even in the story that she tells them, she tells them a story. I don't know. In my culture, we have what you call moroka. Moroka is, is, is the rain doctor. So when when we experience drought, the moroka gives instruction on how we will pray for rain during that season, during that drought. So the Boba tells them the story about okay. how the moroka saved the day. Mm-hmm. Great. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. That, I mean, that, yeah. So any, any final opinions that you'd like to ask them? Yes, you. sure. I'm going to have to ask you to fast forward a little because our schedule said we could be here till 10 past 1, but in fact we can't, so we've only got half an hour to get through the last two. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll fast forward. Okay, sorry. Um, but thank you very much. So let's give them a round of applause. What was memorable? What was meaningful for you in that particular reading, Richard? Poetry of words and voices. I could close my eyes and still visualize. Great. And guess what? It's that. It's that. It's, it's still the same thing. How words capture the images. I could smell the ocean. I could hear the sound of the waves. It, but it's captured in just words. Fantastic. Right at the back. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the singing was the most memorable. The singing. The singing. Yeah. Woo! 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 Um, wonderful music, <laughs> wonderful conflict. I could see magic at the same time. It's a real world where people fight. Um, they would fight all the time. I did. It was really engaging. And he said, I could see waves. Now I understand what he meant when he said create space in your play. Now, I could sorry, I uh, understood what he meant when he said what? Uh, yesterday he told me to create more, to give a sense of space ah. in my play. So I could now see what he meant. Ah, okay. Okay. I love the creativity of the plot. It just took me, it took me on a journey. <laughs> Even the singing, the singing was just so amazing. <laughs> I took videos. <laughs> <laughs> The, the character that you seen me played, um, the, 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 the boy was uh, crying the whole time. I was like wonder, wondering, like, I was wondering what was going to happen next. Yeah. You, you, could, you felt like sad, sorry for the character. Yeah, and for the wave that kept on crying, yeah. yeah. Megan? I really, really love the, the strong characters and I love the idea of like this magical place that things go to when they get lost. Like lost socks, we're always joking about that. And it's so beautiful because I feel like the the text really created that space, and I loved it when they went into the jar. It was so beautiful. I, I, I'd love to see it staged. Femina? Mm. Mm. Um, I liked it when the two girls were playing the earring. It's like, it felt like there was one person talking, because they, they got into the characters, like no one was beyond or like no yeah. behind someone. Just like, it really felt like one person was talking. Yeah. Fantastic, okay, yeah. I liked the irony in the name. You like the irony in the name, yeah? To, to talk to that a little bit? Because no one really notices when a wave disappears, because waves disappear all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. So I figured out, I actually had a problem with the name at first, when uh-huh. I read the script, and then I elaborated on it, and I found out the play was actually about global warming, and how, my, how many waves will it take for the whole ocean to disappear until everybody notices it. Right. So I really like that part. Ah, very nice, yeah. <laughs> um, I like the energy of the actors, how they portray the characters. Okay, great. Yes? I like the two girls, the earring. The earring. Yeah, so the way they see the lines. Okay, yes, they were really synchronized, weren't they, yeah? Oh, uh, she disappeared like wind. Uh, it reminds me of my grandfather who died in 2004, the one that I was living with. Uh, when my mother shipped me off from Jobek to uh, to the villages in Zimbabwe to live with my grandfather. My grandfather used to say, Fanawam, unyo unya malele moya, meaning she disappeared like wind. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a memory to me. Yeah. And uh, it makes me mix my grandfather. So thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
the moments where they spoke about how, uh, depending on how long they stayed there, the, um, the, when their memories started disappearing, yeah. and how quickly it took for the girl to slowly start losing her memory of like her family and that. Mm, yes, that was very strong, wasn't it? So that sense of loss all the time. Jose? Um, I liked it so much, the music. Thank you, thank you. So lots of lots of memorable, meaningful things there. So now some questions from you, Maya, and um, so to the audience. What would you like to ask them? I'm going to take Laura's cue on this. I, I, I talking to the rest of our, of our cast. How do you feel? How do you feel in, in after the the reading? What's your what's your feelings? I feel good because now I understand the purpose of the play and global warming and how it affects our lives because I didn't really care at first <laughs> and then I finally cared and now I feel good about it. So, yeah. Do you feel that once you've played it in front of an audience and you're hearing their response, does that help you make more sense of it? Yeah. Yeah. So our audience's <laughs> feedback is really important. Yeah. Because often when you're busy doing something, you're just trying to get from one moment to the next, eh? And suddenly, wow, it meant that to you. Is that what you, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, somebody else from the cast, yeah? Um, me in the beginning, I was like, what's happening in this play? Because it never made sense. Like, it's like a way of it always goes away. But then I started, like, going through and I focused on my part, and it really, like, spoke, and it means a lot, like, Got a meaning to it behind it, and now it's performing under the audience, it makes so much sense, and I understand it. Not that I know the whole thing, but I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I love the, 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 the audience response that made me feel like I want to go on. Ah, <laughs> that's, <fantastic>. that's <laughs> a good sign. Yes. Okay, do you have any other questions? Who do you, this is a, I think it's such a good question and it's been asked of all of the productions, but who do you think this play is appropriate for in terms of ages? Me. <laughs> um, I was reminded it's the 150th anniversary of the publication of Alice in Wonderland. Wow. And I just, when I heard this, when I was listening to this, it was a kind of the Alice in Wonderland of 2015. Mm -hmm. This kind of crazy, but there was just so much in it. And I think, in fact, yeah, great for children. And I saw it as animation, I saw it as a picture book, I saw it as a, I heard it as a radio play. Mm -hmm. I think, in fact, although it's focused for the young, it will be, you know, it's a little bit like we all loved Finding Nemo. I adore Finding Nemo and I took my grandson to it. And I just think it's, I think everybody will enjoy it. It's a, it's a, a great play for parents and grandparents to bring their children to. Well, I have to say, I think that when theatre is good for children, it will be good for everybody. Exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, if it's good, it's good. And it, and it will work for all, you know, anything above that. But it's almost like, where do you want to start? Where's that starting point? You know, is there something below that that might not work as well for whatever reason? Yeah? yeah um, I say for, for all ages, because it does have some comedy. It's not too serious, like, not too much drama. Everything getting lost in. So, good like put a left to children that they might lose their stuff or will be gone forever and everything. Mm -hmm. So I take for all uh -huh. Great, thank you. Like I said with the other one, family viewing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, I think I'm going to lean a little bit towards opinion, but they asked us a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm think, I, I feel like it's an adult piece. And looking at how the play, um, I found it to be uh, a commentary and an exploration of a lot of adult themes of power and and what is happening in the world right now and, uh, and somewhat also of a, of a sort of a satire, mm -hmm. metaphorical satire of power. Mm -hmm. And I found it to, to be an adult piece. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, interesting. Yeah. Look, I knew them because the comic, some of the jokes in there that children won't really get, so it was. I think so. Yeah, okay. There was a hand in this area here, I think. Yes, okay. Yeah? Um, not so much. It's very interesting. Um, but I just wanted to be noted and on record. I would like to be in the play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, and there's nothing to say. You know, there are there are many. I mean, if I think about all the truly great children's literature. They in fact are they they are introducing adult themes in many ways. You know, that's that's the purpose of literature. It is to introduce us into the world in which we're going to be moving. So I don't think that saying that it has that it works for adults doesn't exclude children necessarily yeah okay so now the other way around that was your question um, do you have any questions for them yeah uh, how has your writing process been uh, what did you start with or yeah I think that, that uh, readings and incubation is so important mm -hmm. for process. I mean, this is this is process, and uh, the the just being in the, the the few rehearsals that I that I was in and being enge and engaging with with the process has informed how you know how 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 moments can change and shift from from. Uh, an activation and a physicalization mm. and and an imagination of um, the cast and the director, so that has inf you know has informed something. I mean, I have an idea that that it's two misplaced earrings that argue with each other, you know, not really knowing who is that they still are together, but they. So that that was that was that was informed by <laughs> that was informed by this by this process. I mean, that's a note, and and, and a wonderful um, you know note around slash bundle who was originally a boy, and then pointed out that why can't it be a girl. You know that idea that this is a character that is non-gender. Mm. So those kind of those are the, that's the process of why readings, you know, help and inform the text because it sits so much here and then it gets to the next point. So, mm. so what, I'm, what I'm asking also is your writing process, writing the script before the reading. What what how has that what how did that happen? What okay, did so start? Yeah, they, they, I mean, there's a history. I mean, I about. To, Ten years ago, I was a I was a high school teacher, and uh, teaching drama in a high school, and I wrote plays for my students in in, in 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 the high school. And this was there was an early copy of this play that I wrote for them, and it was put away in a drawer. And and when there was a call from my teacher, I took it out, and so that so it's a, so that the the there was an early draft of this text that then was redrafted for the call, and then. And now there's a process of redrafting again, so it has a that has a history, and it has a you know so that that um, there's a there's a it kind of talks back to me sometimes of many histories mm. as a process. And it's interesting when work does that when when you work on a particular piece over a long period of time because you when, every time you come back to it there's a kind of a you see something else in it or you. And, and I was thinking about that this week is how playwriting is like it is it's about dissemination and it's about. Some and distillation and things take time. You know, I, I had this conversation with a novelist and he said, you know, playwrights are really lazy because, you know, we write every single day, but you write once a week and, you know, you put it away and then it comes back to you and then you put it away. And it's that, that thing of like that it does take time because it's, it's so many, it's a dimensional, it's a dimensional world. You know, it's, it's, you're making planets. Eleanor Fuchs, who's a wonderful theorist on playwriting, says playwrights, playwriting is like building a planet. Mm. You're building an ecosystem, mm. and I think that's what you know. That's that's what's happening. So the ecosystems take time. Yeah. Mm. So some opinions. Oh, uh, it was the question. Yes. What, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's already been answered, but uh, who did, what age did you write it for? Well, it was for it was when I when it was first written. It was written for a group of fifteen year olds. I mean, that was and and but when I when I wrote it, I wrote it. Literally for myself, you know. In terms of, I I love my my favorite genre is animation, you know. So I don't 
I don't, I, I love, you know, that, that kind of style of, of, of work. And I wrote this after the box trolls, but I saw a bo the box trolls a week ago, you know, and I just thought, that's a, that's a great, you know, that's a great film. Coralie, I mean, I love Coralie. Mm. So, so, I don't, I think, so, it, I think it, it's, it's, you know, if I'm writing it, I, I'm appealed by the world of fantasy. So, mm. it is, it is, for, I mean, I'm glad that it's universal. I'm glad that it is for everyone. I'm very happy with that. It doesn't... I didn't write it specifically for a, for a specific age, although originally it was written for a specific group of, of students or learners. Mm. And uh, shortly, I found it to be very metaphorical and, and full of a lot of themes. Was it your intention or were you just writing a, a fun play? Or was it, did you have an intention with, with the text? Thematically, I'm, I'm interested in ideas of loss and absence. Mm. And, and in, obviously it's an environmental play about waste and recycling. And I mean, I was, you know, when, when the world was constructed, I don't know if you know about these plastic islands that are forming in the ocean. So when it was written, I, I, I called those up, those images, because that for me was the shipyard. So that, that, that's how I saw the world, you know. It's this. So, yes? I just want to thank Mark and Maya for letting us um, change the script a lot, especially mm -hmm. me and Zoe, because so we were slashing, we changed it to a girl, mm -hmm. because she kept jumping around, so thank you for that. No, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, Pat? Um, so the secret is I was in the dressing room listening to the play, as Richard was saying, hearing it as a radio um, drama. Um, and I guess I could, my challenge question is um, that you make this sort of a end of financial year, beginning of financial year, CSR determining project responsibility education thing for corporates. Um, because a lot of the time CSR is seen as, okay, let's just do it. You know, you pick, pick a place and we'll do it, <coughs> rather than it being motivated by okay, this is actually still happening. Global warming is, you know, is, is today, but it's seen as it was. Um, and my first suggestion is, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's take it to them and force them to know that it's still happening and make them take responsibility for actually doing it. Okay, thank you for that. All right, any, we need to speed along, I'm afraid. So any comments? Any, uh, and remember that you can ask permission. We prefer you to ask permission about the, the opinion that you'd like to give. Okay, so yeah, Jackie? May I give a reflection on casting? I really loved the happy accident of having different ages in the cast. Oh, yes. I loved having an adult man and woman and the younger people and how those different voices sounded in the space and to have those different ages in the space. I really mm. loved that. Thank you. Uh, just to respond to that, I mean, it's, it's also written so that, you know, when a play is made in a, in a drama classroom, the teacher acts with with the students. Mm. And I think it's also about that it was engaging with you know with that as a mm. as a motivation. Great. Any other opinions that you'd like to offer on this piece? Okay. Then thank you very much. <laughs>
guys, you also need to listen to everybody else when they speak. Okay? I really love the, the, the play because it's, it's re exceedingly realistic. This is what's happening. I mean, there are a lot of taxi queens and a lot of older men being predators and also younger girls being completely misguided. You know, thinking that I'll find myself a rich older man and then all will be solved kind of thing. Right under parents' noses. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over here, I'm afraid that they're really, yeah. What I liked about the play, like the characters, like they were trying to show something, you know, like being at school. And and, and what uh, what do you, did you feel that they were trying to show apart from the being at school? What what did you enjoy about the they're characters? They trying to show us like, like teenagers, like you know, like us nowadays. Was it yeah. and and did you recognize did you and stuff like that like to okay. impress a girl you know driving things like that? Okay, right. So yeah, the whole thing of trying to impress the opposite sex. Um, yeah. What was memorable for me was um, when the dad actually sold the his child to a stranger and just mm -hmm. left. It was actually it's unusual. I don't think dads do that nowadays. They still do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not too many, but uh, unfortunately there are some, yeah. I, I really love the use of, of music, um, but also the genre that was chosen in terms of hip-hop, uh, R&B. I thought of Beyonce, vomit. Um, so, so, no, for little girls, images, because then what it does, what it does, that that use of songs starts just the poses, well, yeah, it just creates the images that girls are fed on, on, on the media yeah. and, and, and how they should portray themselves and boys also. Mm. So the use of, of, of song, you know. Thank you, Megan. And I really quite really enjoyed the juxtapositioning of Romeo and Juliet with the uh, situation. Yeah. That was that was lovely. Yeah. Um, what what um, was memorable for me as well is something that's actually a problem in probably around South Africa, but also in PE, where it's not the, the, the father figure that's actually encouraging such, but the mother figure, the whole materialism, um, generalistic vibe about trying to, 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 um, to provide for home, for them being, being, being the providers, by actually sending them off to, to these old men and them having to bring home Money, that's their way of, that's what's basically happening right at this moment. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. it up for me. Thank you. Uh, I really loved the, the language, the poetic language, and most memorable for me was, I wouldn't run away, but running needs a destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when the father sold his daughter to some guy, and uh, it reminds me of what happened to my grandma because um, her father wanted her to marry uh, someone very rich, but she refused and she ran away with my grandpa. What I found memorable was the, pot, the moment of, wait, I thought you were loaded. No, wait, I thought yeah. you were loaded because it's, it's sort of this, the conversation that doesn't usually happen. Um, you go to school with people and you just somehow think, you, you don't wonder how they are able to be in that school. Um, and we tend to, what then ends up happening when you get to work with other people, you, you think, oh, we work in this place, but you don't worry about, oh, I live in the point, you live there, and you live there. So it's the bringing of the home into the interpersonal relationship. I, I, that moment stuck out for me. Um, it was a lot that was memorable. I loved the relationships. I thought the layers of relationships, because often you have your kind of hero character, but the relationships between the friendships within the family, the teacher, felt that there were just such a balance of, of characters that were playing at the story, and, and people involved in each other's lives, how we impact on each other. And I also found very memorable the kind of, the playing with the theatricality of styles. You had kind of quite realistic acted out scenes and then standing on the soapbox and the sense of poetry, mm. and the mix again of, of media, of song and storytelling, mm. made it really satisfying. You know, you didn't get locked into, okay, now this is one thing, suddenly it was something else, mm. yeah. Thank you, Lesotho. Um, I found really memorable, and I think it 
also loops back to some of the comments that were made yesterday about Koleka's play around the subject matter being so heavy, um, but it so clearly relates to the people that you are um, making the play for and the main characters who are in the play. And it just, I, I was so, I still like have like butterflies mm. in my stomach thinking mm. about what a scary world we live in mm. and the scary world that young people are having to navigate. Mm -hmm. Um, and that you're not afraid to tackle that subject matter, I thought was just a, a, such a wonderful thing. And I really found memorable how um, your characters, although in the writing, it, you made it evident how difficult it is to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That even in doing the right thing and knowing what the right mm -hmm. thing to do, it, you still have this mm -hmm. incredible conflict about uh, what that means mm. and what it might cost you. It might cost you your friendship, yeah. it might cost you your relationship with your dad, it might cost you these things. Mm -hmm. And that it's not easy to do the right thing and I, I really like that. Um, what, I, what stood out for me was how the audience reacted. If they, were, they were watching something they knew, something mm. they, they've seen so many times and they wanted to see how does it go on, <laughs> is, it, is the ending going to be the same? Because I observed the audience much more than I observed the play and that was interesting. Hmm. Can I just add on? Mm. Just, just one observation. I mean, a memorable moment is about being un unapologetic. Yeah. And I think that you didn't, as, I mean, conscious, there was a conscious sense that I'm not ap apologizing for anything in this play, that anything that is being presented is. And I think that when realism doesn't apologize, it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, becomes, it becomes incredibly strong, electrifying. Right. So what questions do you have for your audience, Jen? Or um, I would like to know, um, because the story is written on, uh, based on true experiences from, uh, that happened to various people in my hometown, which is in the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. I just want to know to what extent you guys, wherever you are from, if you're from Cape Town or wherever, um, to what extent these situations happen in your communities? Like, Is this something that's also very... Very real for you guys? Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah, if you can say something about that, that would be cool. Anybody who is nodding would like to just uh, give us more, more detail? I mean, but it's, yeah. uh, I, mean it's, I grew up in Wamash, and so you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. yes. You see that adrenaline stage just being the most vulnerable uh, part of your life as a teenage girl because you're told that you must be a good girl and then also at the same time you walk in the street corner and people are waiting to degrade you. Um, so it, it just relates. Um, you, you know, you get into a taxi, you are just, your, your body image is constantly, constantly people having opinions about your body image and but also you discovering this change within your body because you're going through an adolescent stage so it becomes a very traumatic experience for for you as as a young person so and i i mean i'm 31 and i, I can clearly relate to that to what you brought through um, I don't know if you remember, I'm also from East London, um, that, that, that accident uh, that happened when um, uh, the twins, uh, uh, there, there, there was a loss of life uh, in, in, a, in a combi taxi. And um, it's, 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 it's just so, so lovely that, that like um, Maya said, that, that, that it's unapologetic and you, know, you, you, you articulate uh, uh, these things with without fear and I mean it's, 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 it's a personal story and, and you're a teacher and, and um, like when, when, when I was in school, high school, uh, getting onto a taxi, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd feel uh, inferior as, as, as a guy, you know, you know, you'd feel very inferior as a guy and then when, 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 when as a lady you get that front seat and you can operate the music and you're with Upunti, you know, it's, it's, 
Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just mesmerizing. Sorry. Okay, okay. The truth of it. Do you have any other ideas for this, Um, How did you guys, because I mean, a lot of, she, it was written, it was set in the Eastern Cape, a lot of the themes obviously transfers to life in Cape Town, but in order to do that, we had to change a lot of names. So we changed a lot of the characters' names, and we changed the name of the school to be your school. How did that make you feel? Did it feel that it hits home more, or how did you experience that? Oh, you decided to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I did because um, we figured out what our teachers would do if we were in such a situation, and I think she did she, the script. I made really well. Um, it handled it as the teachers would have at our school. So. Hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to ask that? <coughs> yes. Um, I, I think how 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 you tickled the script. You you you've done a great job to accommodate everyone, uh, because um, the issue itself is very sensitive and, and um, you know. There's, there are a lot of children perhaps who are experiencing the same thing and then uh, they are afraid to come out of closet. And then I felt like perhaps by seeing your play, you kind of like give them an encouragement to come out and, and speak out and, and, and say, look, I'm experiencing the same thing, I'm relating to that. So without you being, um, paying attention on one location, but uh, you know, you know, diversing it, you know, it, it's kind of like saying, look, uh, we all as humans need to unite and say, Let's do something about this. Thank you. So, questions from your side now. What questions do you have? Femina, is that a question? I think I want to ask the... Okay. Um, if I'm like 15 and I'm dating a guy that's like 22, 23, can he also be referred, uh, referred as my sugar daddy? What? Can you do Okay, if I'm 15 and I'm dating a guy that's like 22 or 23, can he, be, can he also be referred as my sugar daddy? Um, I would say yes, um, especially like what we focused on the relationship, uh, or in the, in my script, and um, she was sleeping with him, and then that, you know, the age difference became a, a big problem, but I mean, I, in my opinion, if you're 15 compared to if you're 23, it's a very different world, and the 15 year old <coughs> is going to really be able to make that many decisions about the relationship, like the 23 year old is going to make Love the relationship, so that's so. In, in, in our story, that would be a, a sugar daddy kind of relationship. Is there not something in the t in the name of, of sugar daddy that kind of implies that there is some that it's a relationship for reward? You know, that yeah. there's some sort of exchange, a kind of a, whether it's a monetary exchange or a protection exchange, or a, mm. you know, there's something that the older party is giving. You know, there's that kind of yeah right. <laughs> Um, just a question from the sugar daddy's point of view. Um, without stereotyping that person, do, you, do we hear their point of view in the play at all? Um, we're kind of seeing him in relation yes. to the girl for the moment in the extract we saw. Yes. Um, in, yeah, in this play, I am making him the villain. Yeah. He is the villain. Yeah. So... Um, based on our experiences of the older men with our school kids. Um, so, so my heroes and the characters whose point of views I tell like, uh, throughout the rest of the story like, is very much Lisa and Megan and uh, Precious. And although Lisa you know, makes a lot of maybe bad decisions, we still hear her point of view yeah. quite sympathetically all the way through. And also then later on, Siseko also. So the four teenage characters is really the, the points of view that I'm empowering in the story because it's about them making the decisions, not so much about the, the adults making the decisions for them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, do you think you use the proper words? Um, would you consider doing a version where you, where you actually expose the sugar mama um, culture? Um, they actually, it's not, it's like, it's like, it's like, they actually, when I discussed this with my kids at school, they said no, but I'm only telling half the story because I'm not 
telling about the sugar mama, and I was quite shocked because I'd heard I'd heard all these stories from my girls about their relationships, and I'd never, you know. And then the, the, after a long debate with them, the grade eleven guys started saying, "Yeah, we want to tell our stories as well," and that was very shocking to me. So I actually do have a a sugar mama in the story at um, at a certain time, just to show that it is actually. Um, starting to be quite prevalent with both genders. So I, I did want to make that quite balanced. Yeah. Thank you, Mombasa. Uh, I, I just want to speak back to the whole villainhood, now that you, you, you've mentioned uh, the sugar mama. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, as, as a parent, you, you've brought in your own um, emotions and, and you know, what, what you've experienced mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, with, with your villainy of, of um, sugar daddy, um, is, is, is there a, a, a didactic, is there something <clears throat> that you're saying that, yeah, this is wrong, do not do it? Um, or is there, is, is there a message that, that you're, you're, you're trying to say to us, listen, you, you, you know, you've got a choice, but, you know, if you want sugar, understand that. <laughs> <laughs> give it a very strong message, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I think that's the why I'm working on the ending and where I end it, I think is important in terms of how much it's open-ended and the kids can decide for themselves and how much I'm saying, um, you know, this, this doesn't work out well if you make this choice. Mm -hmm. So that's still something I'm, I'm wrestling with, you know, so in conversation with my students, um, but I'm, it's good to be aware of the fact that I don't preach at the kids. So I'm, aware, I'm definitely aware of that, yeah. I haven't solved it. So that kind of led, leads us to an opinion and we're running out of time. So can I see, are there any other opinions that we'd like to share? Oh wait, guys, I don't have a sugar daddy. It's just a question. Because <laughs> 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 um, like, I asked the question because some girls would date that kind of like that distance and they'd be like, oh, it's just, my, it's just a boyfriend, you know? So, like they feel cool with it, but like there's nothing wrong with it. So I just wanted to know. Yeah. Um, I would like to suggest about um, the this the class, the specific class. Uh, is that all right? Okay. Um, I would suggest that um, if, if you can specifically uh, identify the class, like the the, the level of. The, 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 okay, I know all of them might, might, might be, but how can I put it? Regional economic class, social uh, studies, regional master class, the school classrooms. No, the, the class, the social yeah, okay. status class. That, uh, you know, the, the children who who, who uh, uh, encounters this 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 uh, which which class are they in? Are, are there those ones who are experiencing more poverty or those ones who who who, who didn't get more financial support or love or, or parents, you know, like um, like if you can try to kind of like so how can I do it? Yeah. But, but you do get what I'm doing. You want to be aware of the you want the audience to be aware of the, the social economic status of the teenagers. Yes. And the relationship with the parents and the location, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, my, my suggestion is because this thing is quite heavy and deals with such current problems and if you're going to show cases for teenagers, uh, there needs to be some sort of responsibility from the writer or the director when handling the, the, the backlash of that from the, from the teenagers. So I'm, 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 and I'm, teachers. And teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'm going to suggest uh, drama therapy if you speak to so if you can explore that. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you mentioned feminism and it, it, you touch on, on the term just in terms of, so if you can just unpack that, yes. Yes. As it does in, 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 on. Yeah. Later on in, in the play. And the mother character, if, if I would love to hear more from her, not in a, I'm not saying, it's very interesting because she's the only r woman in the, the besides the teacher, and development also happens at home. So, um, and it's the first 
It's the first count of the teenagers. It's the first... When I've heard teenagers speak, so I'm going on. But it's the first, especially with girl teenagers, it's their first contact <coughs> of where they go, Mom, where were you? Um, when all this was happening. So I'd love to hear that voice also. Okay, thank you. We, I'm sorry, we're going to have to stop here because we're being, you know, kicked out, really. Um, <laughs> so, so my suggestion is that if you... If you've got something really important to say, we're going to have a moment of feedback after Bruhaha. Hold your thoughts and say it in that space, okay? Um, and if, Kat, really, do you have to? Is it really, really, really important? All right, very, very quickly. 20 seconds. Um, I think it was really fun when you responded to me, Mazza. I'd like to offer a presentation on the title. Um, I would challenge you to label it, uh, or title it, The Cost of Sugar Rather Than The Danger of Sugar. Okay, thank you. So we are now going for lunch. Is it's right? lunch time. Lunch time, everyone. Yeah. Yeah.